All right, so in this video, we're gonna show you how to get a parameter from your 525 drive without having to actually add it to your IO configuration, which is down here, and then having to download to your processor, right? So normally you have your, your tag structure and you would already have this predefined where you have IO, and there are standard IO things that you can add that naturally come with the PowerFlex 525 drive when you add them. But again, some things you want to add, like say for instance right here, I added the acceleration time, which if I open this up and I go to my uh, device definition, and then I go to connection format, I added these in here. Now, again, when you add those in there, see, I'm, I am currently online with this processor right now. In version, I'm running Studio 5000 version 32, and I'm online with the processor. Now, this is not dependent upon that version, so please don't feel like it is. This is very verse and very, uh, there's a very verse, uh, diverse environment as far as like what different, different softwares and stuff and software versions you can use. So just keep that in mind, but normally you would add it in here and then you would have to download. Now, I can't do that being that I'm online and I, let's just say I don't have the option to actually go offline. So what would I do? I would want to use a message instruction. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to get, I'm gonna show you how to get the output current of the actual PowerFlex 525 drive and also how to do that via a message instruction. We're gonna add it down here on underneath rung seven. Now just to show you real quick that the system does work, um, you can see that the drive is ready and we'll just look at the drive running bit right here and the output command. I'm gonna actually push the button and start the system real quick. So you can see that the system is actually working, right? So just to, to give you a little bit of you know foresight that the system is actually currently running. Now again, I have these bits up here where if I hit stop button, you can see that it will stop. So now that we know that the system works and we know it, we have a full working system just like you would in your environment, we're gonna come down here and add a ROM, okay? And what we're gonna do in this rung is we're going to double click. I'm just gonna make this real simple and I'm gonna type in MSG for a message instruction. Now I'm gonna give my message instruction a name and I'm gonna name this uh, read PowerFlex 525 uh, out our current. So we're gonna read the output current, right? Now, I want to keep in mind, this is a very uh, helpful tool that a lot of people don't know about or don't utilize very much. They know about it, they just don't utilize it. it, is open up the message configuration. Once you make the tag, if you're making a brand new tag, you can just open that up and hit create and it will open the message instruction configuration therefore. If you would not have done that, you could just go over to uh, your message instruction and open it from there. All right. So uh, just keep in mind, we're getting one attribute. So all we want to do is get a single attribute. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go to get single attribute, right? Right here. And per the actual documentation that Rockwell has about the PowerFlex 525 drive, that's what I'm going off of, okay? So I know my service code is an E because of I'm getting a, a single attribute. And then I'm going to go to, I'm going to type in 93 for the class. For the instance, I'm going to type in 3. And you're probably wondering again where I'm getting this information. It's from the actual manual. And then I'm going to go to net. Uh, I'm going to type in, in um, a 9 for the attribute. So again, the class is 93. The instance is 3. And the attribute is 9. Okay. All right. So with that said, what we want to do now is we want to make a tag. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna hit new tag. I'm gonna put, let's just say, call this output current. And we'll call this uh, PF525, just so we have a reference. We're gonna keep this as a dent and I'll show you why in just a second. Uh, because when you, if you do it a real, the format will come in uh, incorrectly. Uh, just keep in mind, we'll, we'll explain this. Okay, so just keep that as a dent and we'll hit create. Now it's not gonna populate in there. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So just come down here and pick your tag. And we called it output current. So we'll just populate that in there. Now we're not finished yet. So we just need to go, now we need to go to the next tab, which is communications. 
and we need to pick our path. This is where we're going to actually go in our I.O. tree and we're going to pick the device we want to read from. In my case, it's a PowerFlex 525 right here. You can see that I have it PowerFlex 525 underscore trainer BFD. So now that I have that in there, I'm going to hit apply and all this is set now. Okay. So I hit OK and you see I have my message instruction. Now I'm going to have this reading really fast uh, just to show you how this, this does actually work. And so I'm going to populate the tag and I'm going to come over here and just use the EN. Naturally you wouldn't do that. Okay. Naturally you would have a timer or something of that nature so you didn't oh, you know utilize your bandwidth of your actual network too much or your even your processor at that you know maybe you're reading four or five drives maybe you're reading 20 drives I don't know but when it comes out so I'm I'm reading one drive so in this instance I'm gonna allow it to just utilize the the uh, enable bit right normally again that would be a little excessive okay so we're gonna come over here and then hit OK we basically assembled our ladder you can see our message is actually firing so if we open the configuration up again we can see that it is actually enabling and going done. So that means the tag is populating right here. Okay, so let's actually visit our tag, um, controller tags. Let's go over to monitor and let's come over here to output current. And we can see right here that it's currently zero. Now to make this a little bit easier, let's put this in an NOP. Uh, let's go to a move instruction. I'm going to go get a move instruction and just just so you can see this I'm going to actually populate this here all right and then I'm going to do an NOP so a no operation this is mainly just so you can look at it right and then we're going to do an AFI in front of that so we're protecting it from actually being utilized and pushing data into it what I'm, do, what I'm doing here is actually showing you that this, this will work. So if I hit the start button of the drive right now and I start the drive, okay, this will populate the data back. Okay, so you see that is pulling the data back, but you see it's 16. So what does that 16 mean? Now, um, I'm glad you stuck around because I'm gonna explain this to you just right now. So let's go to our drive, open up our, basically our drive setup. We'll go to parameters. Okay, we're gonna go to parameters and we're gonna see that the output current is currently 0.16. So we have to understand that the PowerFlex 525 is reading in thousands, okay? So we have to convert that, all right? So we're, we're, all we have to do is just convert the data, right? And then we wanna convert it to a real. So in this instance, what we wanna do is we can add another ROM or we can really just adjust the ROM we have right here. Let's just do that. So let's come over here and let's change this math and let's come over here and for this sake, let's uh, multiply and let's take the output current, let's say by 100 and let's throw in the uh, converted PF525 current, <clears throat> okay? And this is going to be a real, okay? So then this will give us a decimal point, and that is basically, you know, but what we want to do is multiply that against that. Well, actually, no, we want to actually, that's arguable. So let's actually do that real quick just to, just to show. Uh, and I think I'm doing, I, I think I want to add a divide in here. So this is correct. I do want to have a divide. So I did the, uh, the wrong uh, thing right here. That's perfectly fine. Um, that's just part of programming when it's trying to showing you the the way to do things. Hey, you make mistakes you correct it All right, so we're gonna do a divide and we come over here and this should give us our current of 0.16 now I'm gonna speed the drive up. Okay, so let's actually uh, Increase this a little bit too so you can see it. I'm gonna speed the drive up so you can see it Okay, so you see the current going up You see it's 0.27 right 0.27. Now, what is the drive? What's the drive telling us? So the drive is actually telling us right now that it's at 0.27. So we didn't have to download to our drive. We didn't have to do anything like that, right? Or, or download to our PLC program. 
all we did was add a message instruction all in under 10 minutes and we converted the actual PowerFlex 525 uh, the actual you know to, to the correct decimal point of what the actual amperage is running okay so I'm going to turn the drive off the actual output should go to zero the current output should go to zero so we don't actually have anything and we can actually do this when we're, we're running we can actually say okay if the drive is running then we want the enable right so we only care about the amperage when the drives running you could do something like that or the case of uh, having a timer or something like that in there so right now we'll come over here and you can see that how that works I'm triggering the message instruction as soon as the drive active bit comes on which means the drive is running the PowerFlex has sent power to the actual motor the, the PowerFlex is sensing that the actual stator is actually ro rotating and giving an output current and that's how that active bit turns on. This point in time, then I'll cut it off. You can still hear the drive running in the background, but again, I just wanted to show you a simple way to do this without having to download. Uh, again, this is just the current, right? So uh, we're just doing the output current and we're using a single attribute. So we're getting one single attribute from the actual PowerFlex 525 drive. And again, this environment that I'm currently working in is Studio 5000 version 32. And this is a real world scenario, real drive, a real processor, and everything is set up properly. Again, so this was a training I did before. Um, and again, I have this on my website. So again, if you wanted to see how all that was set up and more about PowerFlex drives, you can just merely comment below and you can see that. But again, when it comes down to it, uh, I just wanted to show you how to actually do that without having to actually download and add to your setup. Because if you had to do that, if you had to come in here and in your overview, change your device uh, your, over here to your connection format, if you had to change that, you'd have to download to your program, right? And sometimes when you download to the program, you could upset the process. You will upset the process of the machine running. And that's not very, uh, sometimes that's not an option. So if you wanted it and wanted to get it working and wanted to make sure you had it working properly, you can then do that. Now, again, you can see I'm current. This is going to maintain the current. That's the, the negative side to have what I just did here. It's going to maintain the current even though I'm not running. So because right here, it's not overriding the data. So just keep in mind, it's best to use something like a, uh, a timer or something of that nature. Because again, if I've used the active bit, you see it maintained uh, the conversion that I had down here again and I can add this all on the same rung as well so if I wanted to I could just come over here and have this just like this have this just like this and normally you would see that just like so and that that makes it a little bit cleaner in the way that it works right so now we go over here and we can see the way that works all right, so with all that said, hopefully that gave you a lot of information to help you out as far as getting the output current of the PowerFlex 525. And um, uh, that is with that said, we'll see you guys on the next one.